Three major resets to be undertaken. Lawrence Wong. Three major resets. Education Minister Lawrence Wong stated yesterday at the Singapore Perspectives Conference organised by the Institute of Policy Studies that he predicted that the COVID-19 pandemic would only be over in about four to five years. He explained that it would likely take a long time for the world to become fully vaccinated. He told Singaporeans to expect that rules such as mask wearing and safe distancing would hence stay in place for the foreseeable future. He then highlighted the three major resets that he believes Singapore must undertake to be prepared for this new normal. Reset of Singapore's Social Compact Mr Wong said that a reset of Singapore's social compact was necessary. By delicately balancing between the free market and state intervention, economic inequality could be reduced while still preserving meritocracy and social mobility. Mr Wong said that Singapore was forced to draw on its reserves to preserve jobs and help those hardest hit. As the economy recovers, the temporary aid measures will be gradually removed. The government has however recognised the need to establish permanent social safety nets and will find out some way to expand social programmes while also keeping the budget balanced. Mr Wong also elaborated that meritocracy is always in danger of degenerating into a hereditary system where people born into privileged circumstances outcompete the less fortunate. He reasoned that it was uh, therefore necessary to level the playing field through early intervention. This intervention would start from the prenatal stage, where the well-being of a mother can have lasting effects on a child's development, all the way to preschools and schools with high concentrations of the less fortunate, which uh, would from uh, now on have uh, smaller classes, programs to enhance soft skills, and more committed teachers and principals. Increased numbers of allied educators, counsellors and welfare officers would also be deployed, especially for students with special needs. Singapore will also expand the progressive wage model to cover more sectors and will ensure that polytechnic and IT graduates can get better pay and career progression. Reset of Singapore's economy Mr Wong also insisted that Singapore's economy had to become more environmentally sustainable. While Singapore is already one of the world's greenest cities, having uh, frozen the growth of its vehicle population and closed its water loop, Mr Wong believes that Singapore can achieve even clean, uh, cleaner growth and foster greener mindsets. Reset of Singapore's efforts for unity Mr Wong asserted that Singapore has to foster a greater sense of solidarity. Due to easy access to information, divisions have arisen in many countries as falsehoods and conspiracy theories gain a greater spread. This golden age of ignorance, where extremist thought becomes increasingly prevalent, will harm the ability for nations to form a consensus on issues and for governments to do their jobs. It will also encourage social and political tribalism, where netizens self-select information, reinforcing their confirmation biases and closing them off to all dissenting voices. It is thus um, important for schools to teach students on cyber wellness. Mr Wong also said that while racism was still present in Singapore, he views it as being much less bad than a few decades ago. He mentioned that policies like the ethnic integration quotas in HDB flats and race-based self-help groups may be reviewed to ensure that they still serve the intended purpose. He also warned Singaporeans of the dangers of divisive identity politics taking root in Singapore as it would lead to interracial hostility. To achieve greater unity while also preserving Singapore's diversity, it is necessary to build a consensus around a common good and common destiny for all citizens, regardless of individual aspirational or political differences. Some concerns. Mr Wong acknowledged that there were some concerns that Singapore's ability to attract multinational corporations would decline as they could employ anyone remotely around the world. He said that Singapore can still be relevant as humans by nature require some form of in-person uh, social interaction. Uh, 
he encouraged employers to embrace flexible or hybrid work arrangements where employees could have a uh, mix of working at workplaces and also at home. He also explained that the number of travellers entering Singapore has not been allowed to increase and that the number of infected entering Singapore only rose because the rest of the world is experiencing worsening waves of infection. Business leaders Business leaders invited also chipped in, announcing that they were attempting to diversify their operations overseas. They elaborated that it was hard for them to wean off their reliance on foreign labour as few Singaporeans wanted to do such jobs. Businesses are now outsourcing more work to better utilize local manpower. They also conveyed that the stringent requirements and rigid methods of carrying out skills upgrading via skills future in Singapore are hampering their efforts, and that they would prefer greater bureaucratic flexibility to better serve their training needs. On a possible two-party system, Dr. Janel, Senior Minister of State said that it is up to Singaporean voters to decide if they wanted to have a two-party system in the future with revolving door politics or even a multi-party system. Tan In Kiam Foundation Chairman Tan Keng Soon commented that a multi-party system might lead to a less effective government as no party would dare to lose votes by making unpopular but ultimately necessary decisions, such as designating English as the lingua franca of Singapore. He believes that the current state of Singapore, with one dominant party and a weak opposition that holds it to account, is already the best case scenario. Eljuna GRC MP Gerard Giam uh, expressed that both the government and opposition must always act in the interests of Singapore and explain any of their intentions clearly to the electorate. He also asserted that unpopular decisions were tolerated early on in Singapore because our forefathers were willing to make sacrifices to ensure Singapore's survival. He further insisted that politics can be prevented from becoming divisive only if the government is willing to accommodate alternative views. PSP and CMP, Hazel Poa, stated that relying on only one party would be risky going forward. She also claimed that Singapore was actually ready for a non-Chinese PM and that it was actually the PAP that was not ready for it. Mr. Giam agreed, pointing out that the uh, Workers' Party won in Aljunit GRC even when fielding three non-Chinese candidates and two Peranakan candidates. Dr. Jano argued that Singaporeans were found in surveys to still care about the race of candidates and that only if Singaporeans change their attitudes, then it would be ready for a non-Chinese PM.